love playing rivalry games against Northwestern and Loyola and, and just believe in rivalry games. I'm really proud of the way the players were ready to play. They came out and had a great start. And then human nature kicked in. And um, I think you, know, you try to explain that every game, it's just so, I, I feel like I'm just so redundant with everybody, but it, it's so true that every game has a life of its own. And just because you are up 19 points doesn't mean that you're not playing against real life flesh and blood players that want to come back and, and, and beat you. So a couple of years ago, we played Northwestern. We were up, we were down 22 to four, I think, a quarter. Maybe it was 22 to two, 24, something ridiculous. And we won the game by more than 20 points. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where when you're playing a rivalry game, it even becomes more of a, there's more craziness involved than, than normal. So, sure enough, we let our guard down, and, you know, whereas we played that great start, had that great beginning, we let our guard down, did not play a very clean, or we didn't have a very well-played second and third quarters, and even into the fourth. And then I'm really proud of the way the players down the stretch, and that's what having seniors is about. You know, they did finally, we, we did finally get control of ourselves and get the game into a place of, of being able to play with some kind of consistent management down the stretch at the most important time of the game. And, and so I'm proud of the players for getting the W. And at the end of the year, nobody's going to really give you style points or take style points from you for the lack of ability or lack of the way we played in the second, third quarters today. So, again, proud of the players for opening the game with the, with the readiness to play, proud of the players for finishing the way they did, a lot to clean up in the middle. Yeah, Sonia, um, the team overall has 20 turnovers. What Talk about from a player's perspective whatever pressure you might have felt from Northwestern that caused you to have those turnovers, and what can you guys do to improve on that? Um, yeah, they definitely got in the passing lanes a lot, especially towards the end of the game. I think, like Coach said, we kind of just let our guard down a little bit and wasn't as focused on taking care of the ball. So that's really what we had to do, just, you know, fake a pass to make a pass and take care of the ball. Misha, are you able to walk us through – Um, Coach Doug always stressed defense and offensive rebounding, defensive rebounding. So my biggest thing was not to foul, but to just to see if I could um, deflect the ball and <coughs> see if she could touch it, and that's exactly what she did. Do you recall what Lexi Held said to you with 12 seconds left after the timeout when you all were walking down toward the Northwestern um, end of the floor? She, she talked to you for a second. Do you remember what she said to you? She just says stay focused, switch ball screens, and um, and just to lock ball screens, just to stay focused and defend. We were locking all ball screens, so I hope she told you to lock them all at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lock, we, lock's our term for switch. It's no big deal. And just instead of yelling switch, we yell lock. Like it's some scientific deal that's going to confuse the opponent. <laughs> Um, Sonia, uh, obviously the team has 20, they shot 23, made 23 out of 30 free throws, but none more clutch than what you and Lexi Hell did and uh, Darian down the stretch. Talk about the importance of making those free throws down the stretch to give you guys the extra lead that you guys needed at uh, the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Coach always talk about how free throws win games at the end of the day, and that's kind of what separated us because the score was real close. It was pretty much back and forth at the end. So we knew, like, we, we practice free throws all the time. So it's just really what we do all the time, just focus and make the free throw. If we want to win, then we wanted to win. Yes. Um, towards the end of the game, rebounds are super important. And coach, coach and the teammates, um, and my teammates, thanks, sorry. <laughs> coach and my teammates stress that. So that was like the biggest thing for me. And before um, our last time out, Coach Doug said, get the rebound. So I knew that I've been dominating on the boards all night. So that was my goal, that last play, to get a rebound or deflect the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, everything. I think our main things was defense and sharing the ball on offense. That was really the things that we needed to work on the most. And I think we did a, you know, we still, you know, we got some work to do, but I think we focused real well on that 
Um, and just really taking every game for what it is. Like Coach say, every game got, got a life of its own. Even though we got up 20, it didn't matter because, like he said, they still want to come back. They want to win just as bad as we did. So just really, you know, the fight that we had to use, even though we didn't win against Texas A&M, we still fought to the end. So we just kind of, you know, consciously connected those dots. Right, right. Oh, it means a lot. One is, you know, a big defeat over, you know, Chicago rival or Illinois rival on top of the fact that it just put us in a better position for the tournament, for seeding and stuff. You know, like Northwestern is ranked and they, you know, they did pretty good last season too. So for us to get a win over them, it was pretty big. And you should talk about how you guys were up 19, lost a 19-point lead, but be able to persevere throughout the, end of, throughout the game to win and talk about um, not just holding you guys each other accountable, but love, uplifting each other as you were trying to go through this push of this back and forth game. Um, it's very important, and like I like I said in my um, first media, it's our team is like a family. So when we see each other down or make a mistake, we always forgive each other and have each other back, and that's the most important thing when we play. Any other questions for the students? Good job, team. Thank you. Good job, Coach. Yeah, Coach. The bus leaves at 4 a.m. on Tuesday morning. We, okay. <laughs> we have practice, to, to, practice tomorrow. Um, coach, you know the twenty turnovers obviously was a killer for you guys. Just talk about how you got how can you help better prepare your your players to protect the ball more down, especially in stretches like this. The game is really it, this game is so simple, and if you you let your eyes lead your your basketball execution, your fundamental functions, it's amazing how simple it can be, and. We, you know, we talk all the time about fake a pass to make a pass. Not only do we turn the ball over, we turn the ball over directly to, uh, to Northwestern layups. So I, I don't have that right in my head right now. I mean, I know they scored 18, 20 points off our turnovers, I think. However, just a direct pass to an opponent to a layup, that's just – yeah, that, that's grammar school stuff that just has to get fixed. And, and, and again, fake a pass to make a pass. They have nice athletic players that were shooting gaps. And, all this, and what we teach fake a pass to make a pass all the time. And it's amazing how if you'll just fake, do that, you basically use a, a player's, a, an opponent's athleticism against them. They go flying. And I mean, there was a nice backdoor, you know, it was a nice backdoor cut near the end of the game where Lexi faked the pass to Sonia, Sonia back cut. I think Lexi hit it right up the gut. And I think Lexi knocked down that two point shot if I'm not mistaken at crunch time of the game so I mean it's 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 it, it, and there are things that we preach all the time but you just lose your focus lose your edge yeah you know, I, I am not playing a deep bench right now either so we're asking our players to play a lot of minutes uh and pick up full court and you know there's a there's a there's a lot of a lot of effort involved in that a lot of energy expended in that and so you know I, it's not like because we're smaller is why we're up there. And then, you know, we're trying to wear a very good player like Burton out. You're not going to take the ball from him, but you're just trying to wear Veronica Burton down. And so they, they really expended a lot of energy tonight. And, I, I you know, I, Kendall Holmes played three or four minutes, but basically it was a six-player rotation. And so it's really tough to play the way we play with uh, – the limited rotation, and you know, it's, it's hopefully we're going to get a, a player here eligible. You know, Deja, I, I'm not, whatever. I, I can't talk about stuff, so I, I'm not going to talk about stuff. But, I mean, it's just, it's just about, you know, just being able to fake a pass to make a pass. Back to your original question, you guys already met the coach that talks me. Well, we're playing Rutgers first, Jim. So I mean, I mean, when I say when you say I have any thoughts, we have, we just have a lot of basketball to clean up. A lot, a lot of just little basic details to clean up that I think we will clean up. It's just a matter of 
you got to get them cleaned out quickly. That's why you love to play these games early. That's why I love to play a tough schedule again. Sign your reference that Northwestern is ranked. I, I never told them that Northwestern is not ranked, but they're still a good quality Big Ten team that's going to be in the mix for an NCAA tournament out of the Big Ten League this year. So whether they're ranked or not, to be playing an opponent that the committee is going to have to look at head-to-head -head at crunch time, that's a big deal, plus the, 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 the rivalry factor. So it was an important good win for us tonight. And then, and then – but back, we just there are little little details that are really really fixable. But you know, we just just the the what am I trying to say? The the they can all go get their own shot. So, so to be able to share the ball to help each other get their own shot versus just the number of times in the first half we came down and Bruno loves to shoot the ball quickly. But when you're in the half court offense, we're not looking to shoot the ball without anybody else touching it. You know, that's that's not part of what the, what we're trying to do. We have really quality half court offensive things we can run, and and we probably took seven eight shots in the first half without anybody else touching the ball. So to understand concept of tempo when you're out in the open court, when you're in the half court, how to execute in the half court, and and offensive execution in the whole court is is much more fast, but in the half court it's much more deliberate and, and we're still in a place of working through all that those tempo issues. You ask a great question about a and I I think that was huge to the game tonight, the fact that we played three games, one of them against a, a top 25 team and they played three games and none of them were against a top 25 team and I think that helped us. I don't like losing the game to Texas A&M but at the same time I, I think it was, you know, now they you know, the last two ball games that we've played have been against real life flesh and blood big time league games. So that's important as as well the next three and then we got the league a couple of the league and we're still going to Kentucky. So and then we still got Notre Dame. So there's there's still a lot on our plate. But i I just think we can get a lot better and I think we will. I and mean, it's just, just at this time of the year you get better in one practice. I mean I think we're gonna get better in tomorrow's practice. They're not gonna be able to work on Tuesday. We're gonna have to get a little shooting in on Wednesday and then play a game Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come home next Sunday. So Tuesday's gonna be a long travel day. They really are leaving. Bus is leaving at 4 a.m. And, you know, we're going to get down there about 1.30, 1.40, and then, you know, collect ourselves, have some dinner, take a nap, and then on Wednesday we'll get on the floor someplace and then play three games in three days. That's not my phone. So it's one of yours, I guess. Okay, okay. I'm just thinking it's my players. Okay. All right. So that's just really what, what we've got to do. But I mean, I think there's a lot of fixable stuff out here. Nisi was great in the class. You know, she had, it's interesting because as freshmen, yeah, yeah, she came in here in a great rebounding game in her first game, second game at maybe nine, third game she had four, and today she had 17. If I'm a, I tell her all the time, if I'm opposing coach scouting us, I just, I'm just, telling, I'm telling my team, she doesn't rebound. You, know, you take, keep her from rebounding. And that's what A&M did a pretty good job of. She only had four at A&M. So, you know, this rebounding is important, but it's not also just simple either. And, and everybody's got to rebound. And we had some stretches. At one point in the first quarter, we were up on the board, 14, I think, to three, all right? And then, you know, when you look at the rebounds at the end of the game, what's, what did it end, Jim? 47-45. Yeah, so we end up winning by two, and we're up, uh, we're up by 11, in, you know, in the first seven, eight, nine minutes. So, I mean, that means we got out-rebounded badly the rest of the way, and that's an important function of basketball. A quick two-parter. Um, Deja obviously hurt was injured at the end of the game. Is there a status on her? What's I don't know her status. You know, I, I just that's what I was starting to talk about before, and I realized I can't really talk about it because I first of all I don't know. I know she limped off. She was in pain. She sprained her ankle. I didn't see it. I didn't even realize she had gone down. I went through the entire handshake line with Northwestern. It was out the almost out the tunnel when I turned around and saw her being carried off. So I never saw it. She said she t rolled it. So I don't know how bad it is or not how bad it is. But she was in pretty much pain being taken. She didn't walk off the floor. Let's just say it that way. So I don't know anything more than that. Okay. And obviously this is autism night. Can you give your thoughts on the importance of, you know, yeah, you know the, uh, autism is – yeah, but for the grace of God, every one of us is blessed with a mother and a father. We don't get to pick our, our parents. We don't get to pick the time we're born, the day we're born. We don't get to pick our health. And and so, you know, when these young people here are, are, are born with autism and then they fight through their life with autism, Joe's son 
Joe, Joe McEwen's son, Joey, has autism. And, and you know, we were, we were trying to, and, I, and I'm just glad to hear about it. I mean, I, we were trying to get things going from, for, from an autism perspective. I, don't, I didn't know or, or not know how much really got going because some, some marketing changes have been made. So I, I didn't even realize that the autism thing actually came to fruition. I'm happy if it did. So I, I, but I'm just, but again, I try to, I just think it's important to appreciate those of us and, and, and teach your team to appreciate that, you know, you've been blessed with gifts of God to be able to play this game and play athletics in college. And you better appreciate those gifts and be willing to take care of those that aren't so fortunate. Yeah, we. <laughs> it's it's really hard to explain, Connor, what what goes on in this concept and construct of every game as a life of its own. You know, there, there there's timeouts where everything's calm and 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 really, you know, what would you say? Not um, you know, positive, constructive. And then there's timeouts where it's wailing and gnashing of teeth. You know, there's there's a lot that goes on and and you know, there's just a lot of give and take throughout the game and, and just trying to. I don't know that. You know, it's, it's amazing how much credit coaches get when they win and blame when they lose. I mean, I don't know that I really did anything to help them. I mean, I just tried to talk them through the facts of what was going on, the whys of what was happening. I'm always trying to explain the whys of what's happening, not just yell and scream about what just happened, but why did it happen? So, I mean, we we kept talking that through, and we just kept talking about, okay, forget. I think it's very important in coaching that you forget as much as you're irritated that you were up 19 and now you're down three or four, so now all of a sudden that's a 23-point swing, you can get so irritated about that and just you have to live in the moment. Okay, if when the day started, it's four minutes to go and it's an even game and we got to finish the game and the game had gone back and forth the whole day to four minutes to go and even game, you know, you'd be in a different... So you got to keep yourself in that place. You know, it's still... You know, with all that's transpired in the game, it's still two, three minutes to go, or it's a tie game, we're up one, we're down two, we're going we're gonna to knock some free throws down, we're going to have to execute this, execute that, get this done, get that done, and here's how we're going to win the game. We're going to win the game. Here's how we're going to win the game. So it's just so much goes on and back and forth. And, and you know, you're, what can you say when you, your team's throwing the ball from here, me to Bob Sakamoto, and there's this purple shirt? They're wearing black shirts today. A black shirt today, shooting the gap and and going down the floor. I mean, what, it's not that hard to teach. You know, fake a pass to make a pass. I mean, it's just you're, you're passing to the teams wearing the white shirts today, not the teams wearing the black shirts today. And, and so you just try to talk them through it all and, and keep them in a constructive place and and fix things on the fly. And that's the craziness of basketball. I mean, practice time is coaches' time, game time is players' time. But at the same time, within a game, you're still trying to coach them up with inside the game. So I don't know if that answered my question. I gave you a thousand words. You can have me hung, just like Churchill said. Give me ten sentences of any man, have him hung. So you would never do that to me, Connor. (laughs) Say, Say hello to Mrs. Isaacson for me. (laughs) 